The Rectal Route of Administration Medications administered rectally can produce either a local or systemic effect. The most common forms of rectal drugs are suppositories or medicated enemas. This route of administration bypasses the upper GI tract, so they are not affected by digestive enzymes of the stomach and the small intestine and do not irritate the upper GI tract as some oral drugs can. They also bypass the portal system and avoid biotransformation in the liver. Biotransformation is the process where enzymes in the liver metabolize medication and make it into a water-soluble form that can be excreted. Downsides to the rectal route of administration include embarrassment or discomfort related to the administration procedure, incomplete absorption of the medication if the person is unable to retain it, or if the rectum contains feces. As a result, the person may need a higher dose than if the same drug was taken in the oral form. Before administering medication by the rectal route, it is important that you talk to the person and explain that it is very important for them to retain the suppository or enema for as long as they can to give the medicine time to work. Rectal suppositories. Suppositories are firm, bullet-shaped objects that are made from a substance that melts at body temperature. The dose of medication is added to the carrier solution. As the suppository melts, it releases medication into the person's rectum, where it is absorbed into the bloodstream through the rectal mucosa. Rectal suppositories commonly contain medications that reduce fever, induce relaxation, stimulates the normal movement of the intestines and defecation, relieves pain or vomiting, and provides relief from irritation in the rectum. Steps for inserting a suppository. Gather all of the supplies you will need. The medication, several 4x4 gauze pads or clean paper towel, clean gloves, linen saver pad, water-soluble lubricant. Be sure there is a toilet nearby or have a bedpan ready. The MAR, the person receiving the medications. For each person and medication, Match the person and the medications to the person's name and the medications that are due in the MAR. Always use the 5 rights plus 2 each and every time you administer or supervise the self-administration of medication. Wash your hands and apply a pair of clean gloves. Cover the person with a sheet for privacy and have them lower their pants and undergarments. Assist if needed. Only expose the buttocks. Place the person on their left side with their left leg straight. The right leg should be bent at the knee and moved towards the upper body. This is called the Sims position. Remove the suppository from its wrapper and apply a liberal amount of water-soluble lubricant to the tapered end. Using your non-dominant hand, lift the person's upper buttock to expose the anus. Have the person take several deep breaths and gently bear down like they are having a bowel movement. This will help la relax the anal sphincter and reduce anxiety and discomfort during the insertion of the suppository. Using your dominant hand, insert the tapered end of the suppository into the person's rectum using your index finger. Direct the suppository along the rectal wall toward the person's belly button. Continue to advance it about 3 inches or about the length of your finger to ensure that it passes the internal anal sphincter. Have the person lie quietly and retain the suppository for the prescribed time. If the suppository was given to relieve constipation, it should be retained as long as possible, at least 20 minutes, for it to be effective. Document the administration on the mark. Return the medications to its proper storage location. Important considerations. Check with the doctor if the person's anus is inflamed or hemorrhoids are present. The person has had recent rectal 
colon, or prostate surgery, has undiagnosed abdominal pain, has an irregular heartbeat, or has had a heart attack. Enemas. When you give an enema, fluid is instilled in the person's rectum. You will only be providing premixed enemas. An enema stimulates forward movement in the intestines by distending the colon and stimulating the nerves in the rectal wall. For this reason, you shouldn't give an enema to a person who has had recent colon or rectal surgery, a recent heart attack, or undiagnosed abdominal pain. Be very careful when giving an enema to a person with a heart condition, since inserting anything into the rectum stimulates the vagus nerve and could cause changes in the heart's rhythm. Steps for administering an enema. Gather all of the supplies you will need. Premixed prescribed solution, several 4x4 gauze pads or clean paper towel, clean gloves, linen saver pad, water soluble lubricant. Be sure there is a toilet nearby or have a bedpan ready. The MAR, the person receiving the medication. Wash your hands and apply a pair of clean gloves. For each person and medication, match the person and the medication to the person's name and the medications that are due on the MAR. Always use the 5 rights plus 2 each and every time you administer or supervise the self-administration of medication. Cover the person with a sheet for privacy and have them lower their pants and undergarments. Assist if needed. Only expose the buttocks. Place the person on their left side with their left leg straight. The right leg should be bent at the knee and moved toward the upper part of the body. This is called the Sims position. Remove the premix enema from the package. Remove the cap from the rectal tube and add additional water soluble lubricant to the tip of the rectal tube. Gently squeeze the enema container to expel air. Using your non dominant hand, lift the person's upper buttock to expose the anus. Have the person take several deep breaths and gently bear it down like they are having a bowel movement. This will help relax the anal sphincter and reduce anxiety and discomfort during the insertion of the rectal tube. As the person inhales, gently insert the rectal tube into the rectum, pointing the tube toward the belly button. Advance the tube approximately 4 inches. Squeeze the solution until it's empty. Remove the rectal tube and discard the container. Encourage the person to retain the fluid for as long as possible. Most medications will need 20 to 30 minutes to work effectively. Document the administration of the medication on the MAR. Return the medication to its proper storage location. Important Considerations a person with a fecal impaction may need to have the drug delivered by another route. If a person has diarrhea, he or she may not be able to retain the enema solution for the prescribed time. Before inserting a rectal medication, inspect the person's anus for hemorrhoids, which could make the insertion more difficult and painful. Check with the doctor for guidance. Discuss with the person the reason he or she needs to retain the enema. Let them know how long the enema needs to be retained. If necessary, the person may hold toilet tissue or a rolled washcloth against their anus until the urge to defecate passes. Before giving Dystat rectal gel, be sure you have confirmed the prescribed dose is visible and correct. The green ready band should be visible. Administering Dystat Rectal Gel. Number one, put the person on their side where they can't fall. Number two, get the medicine. Number three, get the syringe. Note the seal pin is attached to the cap. Number four, push up with your thumb and pull to remove the cap from the syringe. Be sure the seal pin is removed with the cap. Number five, lubricate the rectal tip with a water soluble lubricating jelly. Number six, turn the person on their side facing you. Number seven, bend the upper leg forward to expose the anus. 
Number eight, separate the buttocks so you can visualize the anus. Number nine, gently insert the tip of the syringe into the anus. Note, the rim of the syringe should be snug against the external anal sphincter. Number 10, gently push the plunger. It should take you a count of three to insert the medicine when counting slowly out loud. Number 11, slowly count to three again before removing the syringe from the anus. Number 12, hold the buttocks together to prevent leakage and slowly count to three again. Number 13, once the medication is given, the person keep the person on their side facing you. Note the time the medication was given and continue to watch them. Follow the instructions in the doctor's protocol and document the administration on the MAR. You are caring for Simon, a 48-year-old male with an intellectual disability. Simon has a history of bradycardia, slow heart rate, and had had a heart attack approximately three months ago. He was seen in the emergency department last night because of complaints of abdominal pain. The ER doctor took x-rays and decided that the pain was most likely due to constipation. You did not tell the ER doctor about Simon's heart attack or the bradycardia since you were there about abdominal pain. When you pick up the prescriptions, you discover he ordered an enema and some colace pills. What should you do? Perfect. Enemas are generally contraindicated for people who have had rectal or colon surgery, a recent heart attack, or undiagnosed abdominal pain. When the vagus nerve is stimulated by the insertion of anything into the rectum, it slows the heart rate down. Simon has a slow heart rate and a recent heart attack. Both of these factors make having an enema potentially dangerous.